Man, big fight weekend because again, before you sh throw shade at Alexander Gustafsson, who lost in his hometown of Sweden, it's, he's had some tough fights in Sweden. I want I want you to remember one thing: um, just put yourself in his shoes this morning. Put yourself in Alexander Gustafsson's shoes. Yeah, he lost to Anthony Smith. I told you guys, man, it was a good bet to take Anthony Smith because if Alexander's not 100% there, Anthony Smith is going to beat you. We saw how damn good he is against John Jones. I don't think that's a matter of John Jones being rusty. I think Anthony Smith is that fucking good. He's ranked number four in the world for a reason. Now he's going to be even higher, and he deserves to be there. That being said, with Alexander Gustafson, um, I'm not even going to... We, we know he lost rear naked submission. He was win winning uh, kind of the whole fight, kind of, he's doing well. It wasn't that he wasn't there, he wasn't present. He just got he just got beat, made a mistake in the transition. Anthony Smith ended up getting his back in the submission. I don't care about all that. I'm not gonna, uh, that's not a, a sticking point for me. I'm not gonna focus on that on this show. I've trained with a lot of guys, man. And you guys, I always reference guys I trained, right? And everyone's like, oh, shop train with this guy. I'm telling you, man, not, not and I, I train with Alexander more. I train with John Jones, and John Jones is the greatest on the planet. He's the greatest of all time, hands down. Outside of him, I've never seen talent ever in my life. Ever in my life, I've seen everyone, man. I've been around the game a long time. Alexander Gustafin is so fucking good at fighting. It's unbelievable how good that guy is at the game of mixed martial arts. Unbelievable. My favorite story about Gustafin now that he's retired. When I was getting ready for Matt Mitrione, um, Gustafson was getting ready for John Jones who we found the same card, UFC 165. At the time, he was splitting um, his camp between Sweden and uh, LA. So he would train at um, Alliance, but then he would drive down to Rain. And so I would train with him at Rain. It'd be him, Brandon Vera uh, were the guys that would come down from Rain. So Alexander and I would, would spar rounds there. And I just remember him, uh, just, I was just, I, I could not, be, like I, I, I've been around high level mixed martial arts. I just never saw someone at his size move the way he could move and whether he was wrestling or, or boxing or uh, jujitsu, he was so good, man. And I just, I just remember being like, dang, that's like, that's what it is to be one of the greats. Like that's the skill set you have to have. I didn't have that skill set. I just remember um, he trained with Seth Rain, and then uh, his, him and his team and I kind of kicked it off. So he's like, dude, come down whenever you want work. So then I scheduled to do a, a week camp down in San Diego Alliance. So me and my team drove down there. It's probably three weeks getting ready for uh, Mitrione. And so I go in there and we're supposed to start at one o'clock. Well, I get there about 12, Around 12, I drove down from LA. I get there around 12. And Gusvin, I will never forget this, he's in the ring. He's in the boxing ring. And he's sparring a professional boxer who's ranked a heavyweight and beating the brakes off of him. He went six rounds with him, no rest. They said, oh, just get ready. You can warm up and he'll go into the uh, octagon next. So he'll do, and I went, how many is he doing? They go six. So I watched his last three. Ended up almost knocking the dude out. I'm not going to say the guy's name. Ended up Wobble Street City. And I'm like, what the fuck? Comes over, no rest, minute break, comes over, and then beats the brakes off me. <laughs> Straight up beat the brakes off me. We're, I was supposed to be there for a lot longer, and I went home that night because I got concussed. Oh, shit. He fucked me up, man. And I, I didn't realize how good his wrestling was because... My game plan for Mitrione was to take him down and submit him. I didn't want to stand up with Mitrione because on the feet, I felt like he would have an advantage. He's quicker. He's a southpaw. That's his game. On the ground is my game going into that fight. So we just want to take him down. So with Alexander, I thought, well, he has good takedown offense, but it's probably not great. I'm definitely going to be able to get him down. <laughs> mm -mm. 
Mm -mm, not at all. Matter of fact, his co in between rounds, his coach came over to me and was like, listen, you keep trying to hit that double and then run the pipe, you have to use chain wrestling. Meaning, if I go the double, I go the single, if I go the single, kick out, like you gotta, you gotta have steps. I didn't have enough steps. I, I'm not Khabib. I had three or four go-to moves in my chain wrestling, but Gustavin was so good. Uh, he was so good. I can't, I can't emphasize to you guys how good he is at mixed martial arts. And again, he's like this, this close to be considered the greatest of all time. Split decision loss to DC. Then, his, then that fight that he had with John Jones at 165 was some people thought he won. This fucking close, man. One zig instead of a zag, and he's the greatest light heavyweight fighter on the planet of all time. That's crazy. That's insane. He was so good, man. He was so good. I've always held him in the highest regard. Always, always. I saw him wrestle with Phil Davis, who's a Penn State, freaking has a statue at Penn State. He's a Hall of Famer. Phil had his hands full. Now, granted, Phil beat him, and that's when that was one of his first fights. Phil choked him out, and then uh, Alexander went to Alliance. That's when they came real close. Well, guess who downloaded the wrestling data of a world-class wrestler? Alexander. And try and take him down. Notice he never got taken down. Notice he took down John Jones. So going into that fight, everyone go, all right, how do you have the main event? Uh, Augustine and John Jones, I went, it's gonna be a tough fight. It's gonna be a really tough fight. Train with both, but I will tell you this, Gustin will take John down. He was like, what the fuck? I'm like, I'm telling you. I see him fucking beast, world-class wrestlers, man. The, the kid is so gifted and huge. I don't know if the picture's still on my Instagram. I don't know how I want someone to find it, but he's so big, man. He's so big. And there's certain moments in life where you're like, oh, he's light heavyweight? This guy makes a light heavyweight? I need to get the fuck out of here. I need to get the fuck out and start telling dick jokes. This guy is ridiculous. Yeah, I always hold him in such high regards, man. Just amazing. Amazing, amazing fighter. And just a zig instead of a zag, and he goes down as the greatest of all time. Now, he's another one I hear in Sweden is like Tom Cruise. Heard he gets treated great out there. I hope he goes on and finds whatever he's looking for, man, to fill that void of competing. But I think he's already one foot in, one foot out. And I think maybe as an idea, he's a smart, smart fucking dude. That's what made him such a great fighter. His IQ, he's just a smart dude. And I wish him the best, man. Shout out to Alexander Gustafson. The other main highlight you guys saw all the time was uh, the head kick of uh, Rahik. Alexander, they say Rasik, right? Razik, 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 Rahik, 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 Rahik. <laughs> against Jimmy Manoa. That was a bad one, man. Done. It was over. Did Jimmy Manoa retire too, or no? <laughs> hmm. He's fun to watch, man. But uh, yeah, that's tough, man. Again, the game always wins. Always wins. Always, always. Um, yeah, with. Uh, with Raik, again, you, you got one at light heavyweight, man. That kid's a fucking force. He's gonna be a real problem. Real, real problem. Oh yeah, heavy heart when Alexander goes to win fights, man. If he would've just came five years later, you know, if he was just five years earlier, the greatest of all time. What else we got? Give me some time. There he is, public enemy number one. The notorious Dylan Dennis himself, the infamous. How are you, Dylan? Doing good, man. How you been? It's good to talk to you. Where have you been? You know, I was like always excited to come on your show, and then you would have like AJ or Gary Tunnan on, and I was like, oh, it's not that exciting <laughs> anymore. But, but now I came back around, so. All right. Well, we have come to our senses. We're back talking yeah. to the headliner. You have to come to your senses, though, having those guys on the show, you know? Kind of to, like, uh, brings down the value, but. Okay. Well, thank you for keeping tabs. But you have been quiet. You have not talked. Everyone has weighed in on, um, you know, the 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 events that happened at two twenty nine. Everyone's had their say, but you have not. Why is that? Um, I would just I think timing is is key. You know, um, there's a lot of like everybody kind of had an opinion about it. Everybody kind of had something to say about it. You know, and it was just kind of a lot of fake stuff out there, a lot of rumors and stuff. So I just kind of let everything blow over because. You know that that wasn't important you know um my career is more important to me than just some little brawl you know sure okay so so let's get to it because uh, i think everyone is wondering 
how you feel about what happened and 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 in particular what your side of the story is so yeah you are a cornered licensed man right you you are there yeah um excuse me i should say you're a licensed cornerman and you are there cornering your friend conor mcgregor it's ufc 229 it's october 6 it's las vegas it's t-mobile arena uh it goes to the fourth round unfortunately for him and the team things don't go his way he loses that fight from your perspective what happens then um so this started in like i think the third or second round when i was behind the cage he was on the other side and he kept trying to come and like as he was like pointing and saying stuff to me and then i was like thinking in my head like man this guy's crazy i was like just trying to like focus on my friend here and you know stuff like that and he kept like coming and saying stuff and like cursing and i was like all right this dude's insane and then like even in between rounds like if they were close to the fence he was like eyeing and like mouthing stuff and i was like the fuck you know and um uh, so it started actually during the fight that stuff was going on so i could kind of sense that he was in a, in a in a different state of mind and then i mean after the fight you know even with nate diaz any of them like you know after a fight it's it usually like you know respect so i would never ever start a fight with someone after a fight like you know i'm a martial artist from the beginning since i was a kid and that's just not who i am i'm not going to be the kind of guy that's like after a fight like you fuck you you know especially like that that's just not me so um yeah so that was going on and then there was uh there was a guy named Riz. i don't know his name i don't know um i think he's one of his managers you know but do you know his name ariel uh rizvan yeah rizvan he was commenting on my picture a couple weeks before saying all this crazy stuff to me so then i got up you know after the fight was over i got up you know obviously i'm in shock you know connor's one of my closest friends and you know training partners and you know i care for him a lot so i got up and i'm just sitting there because you know obviously i just seen my friend lose and i feel someone hitting me on the back like really hard and i'm thinking like oh maybe it's like the commission or something trying to go into the cage and then i look back and it was him and then i was like what's up and then like then i turn around and i seem to be throw the mouthpiece or something and it was kind of like he spit on me because like when he threw the mouthpiece there was spit everywhere and i was just like all right come here and uh ended up he jumped over the cage and you know whatever happened happened but um yeah, it was just it was crazy. It was just it just kind of happened in the moment. Okay, so so there's a lot there that I haven't heard um, of before. So in the middle of the fight, he's actually saying things to you. He's talking to you in the middle of the fight. He what was, is he, he saying? He wasn't like saying. He was like you know, giving the eyes. He was like he was like that the whole time. Like okay, uh, he wasn't like a lot, but the guy's you know it was obvious. And like I just ignore that because you know during the fight I'm just focusing on what I have to be looking at and you know giving any advice I can. So that's just nonsense. But I mean it was going on. And then, in, in, I don't know which round it was, but I was behind, you know, the, the cage and he kept trying to get him and his guys were like holding him back and he was like pointing and shit. And I was like, I don't know, it was just weird. But um, yeah, so like I kind of could see that he was kind of like coming towards me or whatever. And then, you know, that kind of happened after. I would never expect that to happen, to be honest. Um, at any point, yeah. did you feel uncomfortable there? Like, did you feel like something was about to happen, that someone was going to come at you? No, because, you know, that happened in the Nate fight. He was talking shit to the corner, too. So I thought it was just like one of those, you know, I didn't, you know, I'm uncomfortable. I, I stay calm and cool. Like, I'm just focused on one day, but what I have to do in my task and my friend and training partner that's fighting. I'm not worried about what he's doing or, you know, so that I, I could see it. But I was just like, you know, what, focus on what you have to focus on because at the end of the day, you know, that's that's what matters. And so the moment the fight ends, um, he submits Connor, Khabib submits Connor. Even before Khabib goes in your direction, you're saying that that Rizvan, one of uh, Khabib's managers, started hitting you from the back. Yeah, there's a video. I mean, he was like, he didn't punch me, but he kind of like he slapped me like really hard. And I looked at him, and he was like, "What's up?" And I was like, "What's up?" I don't remember what said. You know, everybody keeps like asking me these questions, man. It just happened in the moment. Like all of a sudden, it's like a freaking. Obviously, I'm dealing with what I just saw, and then all of a sudden, people are jumping and people are grabbing me. It's like. This is mayhem, you know. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that 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 was the thing that started. I, I don't know. And then, then yeah, know, it's weird. And then uh, Khabib obviously goes in your direction, as you said. And and did the mouthpiece actually hit you? No, because it, it got stopped by the cage, bro. Even when it okay. gets stopped by the cage, like it was still wet, so like yeah, it's disgusting. Like you know, basically <laughs> that's like someone spitting on you. So and then obviously, what, what am I going to do? Like you know, yeah, I'm going to be like, oh, stop that. Like people are like, you know, people are very unrational when it comes to stuff like that. They're just like. Obviously, I'm gonna go like this, sure. or like something. Someone just spit on you, or you know, I'm not gonna be like, "Hey, don't do that." <laughs> so, in the immediate aftermath, um, the 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 word around the community was that you threw out some like anti-Muslim slurs or some defamatory uh, comments. Did you do any of that? Did you say any no. of that? There was about 
how many people in that arena. There was not one video of me saying that. That was all, I'm pretty sure, Ali trying to just uh, start trouble, which is very, like, disheartening because I have very close friends that are Muslim and, and uh, of many religions, you know, so that really hurt me, actually. And, uh, yeah, I would never say anything like that in my life. The only thing that you did was say, come on, like, bring it. You're going to throw the mouthpiece? Let's go. Yeah, of course. I mean, that's, that's just who I am. Like, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, like, someone spits on you. What are you going to do, you know? I would teach my son that, too. If someone ever bullied you or spit on you or do something like that, like, you know, you have to defend yourself. So. Okay, and so he does jump over the cage in your direction. Yeah. Did he actually punch you? Did you guys exchange? I think, I, it was funny when he jumped, like, it was such like a weird, like, attack because he had his hands up and his feet up. And I was like, I was like, where do I, like, how do I block this? I was like, do I block <laughs> the kick or the punch? And I didn't, like, I was like, really confused, you know? Because, like, he was just, like, both like this. And I was like, is he going to, like, drop kick me or is he going to, like, uh, in my head, I was like, all right, we'll just block and then then go, you know? So, uh, I don't know if he hit me with a hammer press. I don't remember, but I don't think so. I think most of the marks I had was from after when the guys were punching me and stuff. But, um, yeah, he, he didn't really hit me. And then I, I remember throwing a right hand. I hit him with a right hand. And then I grabbed him in the clinch. And I remember having, like, a collar tie on him. And I was, like, throwing uppercuts. And he kept, like, it was weird. Because, like, usually when you fight someone, like, they want to, like, they want to fight you. So, like, he was, like, he wasn't coming towards me. He was, like, going away from me. And I was, like, trying to bring him back with the collar tie. And he kept, like, cowering away. It was, like, the weirdest thing ever. So, I was, like, how do you jump at me? And then, like, run away. So, I don't know. That's all I remember. Did and obviously, connect? like, it was in the moment. Like, you're not, you're not going to remember everything. But, yeah. Yeah, it was just, it was just mayhem after that. Did you but connect? it was really weird how he was, like, backing away after you jumped someone. But to be honest, I really, like, I actually didn't mind it. Like, I, I like, I don't, not necessarily say I like stuff like that, but that's just, like, another, like, Saturday night and <laughs> where I come from. So it was, like, kind of fun. I don't know. Where you come from? It. Where do you come from? You come from New Jersey. Jersey. <laughs> Jersey's tough. The Some of the street. toughest people come from Jersey. Right, right. That's true. That is very true. Did you connect? With, like, when you said the uppercuts and all that, did you actually connect? Yeah, I hit him on top of the temple. It was, like, here, and it's the side of the head. I just threw a big right hand. So, I mean, my striking's not the best, but... I still got a couple combos in my in my arsenal. That might be the most humble thing you've ever said. <laughs> I was gonna pull guard, but I didn't get the camp. Right, yeah, it was a little crowded there. Now, did anyone actually punch you? Like in the melee from the back, did you actually get hit? Um, the only time I got hit was when I was being restrained by the by the law enforcement. Um, they they were punching me in the back of the head and stuff. I mean, there's videos of it. I don't know. Yeah, it is what it is, though. You know, when 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 war goes on, you know things happen the only thing i had a little bit of a problem with is that you know people punch me in the back of the head that's kind of not really cool you know but whatever it is what it is and so um obviously then you know some of his teammates come in connor tries to uh tries to defuse the situation he's over this the thing is just completely yeah. getting out of hand connor gets punched as well are you witnessing all of this and did you try to get in yeah the i tried to get back in and then yeah. there was like four security guards so big dude they're just like jumping on top of me and um, I was trying to get back in the cage and then they were saying like, we're going to arrest you. They're going to arrest you. And they were like saying some crazy stuff. And I was like, no, like, look, it's my friend. Like I'm going back in, like, you know, because like, obviously I see that I'm like, I'm going back in there. And, uh, they had like three, four cops on me and they were like screaming the craziest crap, like stuff to me. And then it ended up all getting full. And then they took me to the back and, you know, it was, what it was. What happened in the back? What was that like? Um, you know, it's, I don't know. It's just, just kind of. I had to deal with obviously the fight and then that and it was just it was it is what it was you know like uh yeah you know that's just like more personal to the team but sure um yeah it wasn't really anything who cares about it is it true well i don't know about who cares about it but i i understand <laughs> why you'd want to keep it yourself is it true that they asked connor if you wanted to press charges and he said no yeah okay. i mean that's just not who we are like um it, it all is fair and with the war i guess yeah and then, and then when you guys left, when you guys went back, the the whole thing just like lingered till then, right? Didn't the cops show up and you had to like talk? I mean, this thing it wasn't like you could just leave and the whole thing was done, right? The 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 aftermath lasted a long time. Uh, yeah, not really. I mean, they come back to ask you questions. I mean, obviously, we, I mean, for me, I was defending myself, so like, what are they gonna do with me? I mean, uh, some people here are saying like instigating and stuff like that. It's like it's stupid, you know. But I guess it is what it is. Now, you, you don't shy away from uh, conflict, if you will, on, on social media, but I'm just wondering, like, what was your social media like in the days afterwards? Because everything was just so heated um, and everyone yeah. was taking sides. What was that like? It's actually crazy. I mean, I was getting like 40, 50,000 comments, a picture, like saying like the crazy stuff, like death threats and, and stuff like that. And uh, 
it was actually pretty it was intense <laughs> but i mean i'm pretty good at like just dealing with it you know yeah did you ever feel uncomfortable like you know getting death threats is a pretty no. serious thing no 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 not at all i, I feel like if someone's gonna actually do something they want to say it so sure that's a good point um so then the whole thing lingers and then we find out uh that finally connor's getting six months habib gets nine months um with the opportunity to go down to six but it doesn't look like he's going to take that opportunity and then zubaira and abu bakar get a year um yep. and then so that happens all in 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 one shot now before i get yep. to you what did you think of the the punishments to those four did you feel like they got a fair like they it was it was the right call um yeah, I really, I didn't really think about it. It doesn't really matter to me, you know? Um, okay. I really care what you got or didn't get. Okay, but then you weren't addressed in that initial yeah. hearing. Then you had to, like, stay even longer, like a month and a half, to finally get your punishment. Why was that? I think they were just continuing the investigation and, and checking things and and stuff like that. So, I mean, I guess it was good because uh, I got, like, a really low fine and stuff. So, yeah. I guess it was good that they did the investigation thoroughly. And I think they did a good job, you know? I mean, seven months is a little bit long. But I'm just happy for it to be over because now I could fight and like that was what was really killing me, you know. A lot of people don't see it, but you know, I, I love to fight. So it, it sucked seven months in the fighting and just sitting there and like, you know, you feel like you're kind of lost. Like, I just want to fight. I want to, you know, get back with my career. I'm only 25. It takes a lot of time out of my, you know, short career, not short career, but young career. So that really was frustrating. Yeah. So in the end, you got seven months and $7,500 fine. You're at yeah. peace with this so you can return in early May. <laughs> Because you have to be at peace with it, right? There's nothing right. I could do about it. So, um, yeah, I guess I'm happy with it. Yeah, I'm going to return too in May, so which is really good. I'm really excited about that. If you have not already, hit that subscribe button with its notification bell and leave a comment in the comment box below of what you thought of the video and tune in for more on MMA News Outlet.